Hello everyone, my name is William. Today we're taking a look at some source code on how to implement a sparse table. In the last video, we looked at what a sparse table is, how it can be used to do fast range queries, and what's involved in building one. This video is a follow-up to that video, so make sure you give the other video a watch before proceeding. I'll make sure to put a link in the description below. Awesome, so here we are in the source code written in Java. In this header, I put some instructions on how you can download this code and run it yourself. This particular implementation I'm about to show you is for a min sparse table that can do minimum range queries only. If you want to do any other type of range query, such as a max range query or a product range query, you will need to modify this code. I also have another more generic sparse table implementation on GitHub, which supports various types of range query operations, if that is of interest to you. Right here in the main method, I have a few examples of how this script works. First, you start out with an array of values, then you feed that array to the minimum sparse table class, and afterwards you can start doing minimum range queries. In the first example, I query the minimum element in the range 1 to 5 inclusive, which prints the answer negative 3 with an index position of 2. Alright, let's dig into some of the details of what's going on inside the min sparse table class. First thing you will notice is that there are a few instance variables to know about. The first is n, the number of elements in the input array. Then there's capital P, which is the floor of the base2 logarithm of n. This is effectively the number of rows in the sparse table. After, there's the log2 array. This array is simply used to do fast lookups for the floor of the base2 logarithm so that we don't need to do any calculations when we need the value. Then dp is just the sparse table with p plus 1 rows and n columns. It's called dp, short for dynamic programming, because that's the method we use to actually generate the table. Following this is the variable it, short for index table. This is the table that keeps track of the index of the selected minimum element in the range we are querying. I briefly mentioned this in the last video, but this table is super handy to have around, and we will hopefully be making use of it in a future video. So when you want to create a min sparse table, you need to provide the input values to do some range queries on. However, remember that this input array can only contain immutable values. If the data changes after the sparse table is built, then the queries on the sparse table will be wrong. When you pass in the values array to the min sparse table constructor, the constructor actually builds the sparse table. Doing work in the constructor isn't considered a best practice, but this script is just a simple proof of concept example of how to do range queries using a sparse table. All right, so we start by getting the value of n, the number of elements in the values array. Then we compute capital P from the value of n. After we know those, we can go ahead and allocate some memory for our sparse table and also our index table, which are both the same size with p plus one rows and n columns. The next thing we do is simply populate the first row of both of the sparse table with the input values and the index table with the indices 0 to n. After that, populate the log2 array with all the values for the floor of the base2 logarithm between 1 and n inclusive. Next, we build the sparse table and its associated index table. These two for loops iterate over all the cells of the table while making sure not to consider intervals which go outside the bounds of the table. Inside the two for loops, we can find the values of the left and the right cells and take the minimum. Lastly, we want to save and propagate the index of the smallest element inside the index table so that we don't lose track of it. You can think of the index table as an identical sparse table that tracks index values instead of minimum values. 
if we scroll further below, you see that we have two more methods to look at. These two methods are used to query the minimum value in a given range and query the index of the minimum value in a given range. The first method, query mim, calculates the value of the smallest element in the range L to R inclusive in constant time. This method works by finding two overlapping ranges which cover the entire interval between L and R and taking the minimum of both those intervals. The first thing we want to do is calculate the length of the interval, which is subsequently used to find the value of P, the floor of the base 2 logarithm. Intuitively, you can think of P as the row in the sparse table we want to query, and k, which is derived from p, as the largest power of 2 that fits in the interval. Then simply do a lookup to get the left and the right cell values and take the minimum. The left cell is found at row p column l, and the right cell is found at row p column r minus k plus 1. The last method, query min index, is used to find the index of the minimum element in the range L to R inclusive. If there are multiple smallest elements, the index of the leftmost one is returned. To do this, we're basically going to do the same thing as when we were finding the minimum value in the previous method. We're going to find the values of the left and the right cell, but rather than returning the minimum of the two, we're going to compare them find the smaller one, and return the index stored in the index table. And that's all I have on sparse tables for now. Folks, thank you very much for watching, and please subscribe for more mathematics and computer science videos.